Hey everyone and welcome back to another video from Aman Talks NRL Supercoach. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the best cheapies to start off with in your round one squad. Ahead of the full kickoff of the 2024 season, uh, we've had two games already in Vegas. We've got six more to go uh, on this weekend. Recording just after TLT round one, so we've got some updated information about some of those cheaper options. So wanted to get this video out to you guys, hopefully as soon as possible. If you do appreciate it, give it a thumbs up please consider subscribing as well. We're actually really close to 4,000 subscribers. If we can get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of this weekend, that would be absolutely tremendous. So hit the subscribe button if you are new here and you want to see more content during the year. Without further ado though, let's get straight into it. So starting off at the hooker position, uh, unfortunately the best cheapies that we are hopefully going to be getting were Brendan Hands and Joey Lussick of the Parramatta Eels. Brad Arthur has just done Brad Arthur things though. He fed us a dream in the preseason that he was going to choose one of them for 80 minutes. That's not been the case. TLT has dropped and we've got Brendan Hands on the bench, Joey Lussick named to start. The fact that they're both named and minute sharing and we have no idea what the minute share is going to be, I don't even think we can read that much into one of them starting. It could very easily just be 40 minutes, 40 minutes. Given that they're just priced over 300k and priced at a expected points of 33 to 30, I kind of feel like that actually is what we may get out of these two. The The benefit of them playing as the full 80 minutes was that Brendan Hands averaged 56, Lussick 47. Doesn't look like we're going to get that at least for the start of the year. So they're, I think, out of consideration for my round one team, if I'll be honest. Um, similar with Jaden Braley, he's not been named for round one. He's picked up a hamstring strain, so he'll be out um, indefinitely, at least for the beginning of the season. So he's definitely not an option, which kind of leads me just to Danny Levi for the Canberra Raiders. He's been named to start. Tom Starling is on the bench. So it's a very similar setup to what we have with Brendan Hands and Joey Lussick of the Eels. The only difference here is that Danny Levi is 238k. So he's almost 100k cheaper. Um, well, he is 100k cheaper than um, Brendan Hands. So I'm kind of looking at it as, I think, just honestly, take that 100k money saving on Danny Levi. I suspect he'll be 40-40 minutes split with between him and Tom Starling of the Raiders. Zach Wolford hasn't been named, so it looks like at least for the time being, it's going to be Levi and Starling as the two main hookers for the Raiders. And if he plays 40 minutes, look, he's probably going to average about what he's priced at, which is 23. Maybe he gets to 30, 35 points average, which, look, it will mean he'll make some money. So I kind of just look at it as, I think, with a hooker spot, spend up big in your primary position of, like, maybe Harry Grant, Happy Coruscant, um, and then I think I'm looking at going very cheap with Danny Levi because it looks like he's been named to start and probably has got the best job security, although minute sharing will be there with Tom Starling. I've mentioned um, Luke Summerton of the Penrith Panthers here. He's been named for round one to start. I don't think I'd be going with him though. Um, the only reason for that is that Mitch Kenny has been suspended for round one. I fully suspect Kenny to come back into that team um, in round two when his suspension is over, and I don't think Summerton is going to be a long-term pick in that Penrith Panthers team so I wouldn't be going for him definitely for the same price I would just be going Danny Levi the overall hooker position does look quite poor we did have Carl Lawton play for the Manly Sea Eagles but he only ended up on like 12 points and apparently he's got some injury doubt as well um, that may pave the way for Chan Kum Tong hopefully I pronounced that correctly um, of Manly who's 238k as well but we won't see the Manly uh, round two team list for another week so again he's probably not one I would be looking to start off with maybe just a one quick question on hooker is um would you consider enough? I've seen a couple of people ask me on social media is, would you just start with a guy who's like absolute bottom dollar, not going to play, but you're only ever going to play your other starting hooker? I'm not a fan of that just because the hooker spot, you've only got the two spots in your team. And if your primary hooker goes down with an injury, you're effectively forced into trades. At least if you have, say, for example, what I'm currently looking at, a Harry Grant, Danny Levi combination. In round four, when Harry Grant has his buy, not ideal. Um, when Harry Grant has the buy, Playing Danny Levi is obviously not ideal, but if you can get me like 35 points, look, I'll take it. Um, and then play Harry Grant the rest of the year. But at least you've got some coverage on your bench um, with Levi compared to a bottom dollar uh, Nuff who's not playing at all. So that's kind of my general take on that as well. If you're going to have enough, I'd rather use them in your center wing or second row forward spot where you've got seven spots in general and you've got a bit more flexibility of um, a, a bench to cover any injuries in your starting 13. So that's kind of my summary on the hooker cheapies pretty dire at the moment if I'm being honest Danny Levi is probably the only one who screams out to me and that's just because he's 238k no other reason for it now moving on to the front row forward one thing I'll also mention with the cheapies that I've got on all of the positions is that they're priced 350k and below 
Originally, I had Liam Knight in my list here, but he's not even been named in the 17 for the Bulldogs, so he's not really an option at all. Um, I had to record this after TLT because I wanted to get full information, so um, I couldn't really comment on Spencer Lenu, and he's already played on the weekend. He's potentially facing a suspension anyway for that racial, apparent racial slur that he's uh, said to Ezra Mam. So he's probably not even a consideration and you can't even buy him this week anyway. So we'll skip over Spencer Lenu as well. Around this kind of lower 300k range, you've got um, Royce Hunt of the uh, Cronulla Sharks, 333k. Historically, he's got a pretty good PPM. Like last season, he averaged uh, 32.6 points in about 25 minutes of gameplay. So pretty healthy PPM. The reason he's considered an option as a cheapie is that um, Braden Hamlin ULA is currently out um, and he's supposedly resting his knee um, after some off-season surgery. So there's no kind of time frame as to when um, Hamlin ULA will come back for the Sharks. So in that period of time, Royce Hunt may be an option who, if his minutes step up from 25 to say even like 27 to 28, his average can go from that 32 to around that kind of 36 to 37 and you're getting maybe five to six points of value. So that is potentially a consideration if you don't want to go really really cheap in your second front row forward spot if you've got that flexibility to still do that in your team don't mind Royce Hunt but the Sharks do have a fairly big uh, bench in terms of middles we're looking at a bench of Jack Williams, Del Finucan, uh, Toby Rudolph and Thomas Hazelton so four forward bench we don't love we don't we don't love that for any Sharks forwards really so I think with Royce Hunt I, in my, my honest opinion is that it probably feels like a little bit of a too good to be true slash looks promising but doesn't quite always deliver so he's personally not for me um, but if you are shopping around that lower 300k range he's probably at the moment a better option than Lenu because it looks like Lenu could be getting suspended um, we had Fletcher Baker of the uh, Broncos he was named on the bench but I think we've got other front row forward options here who are named on the bench and are cheaper so I'd probably just want to um, take them and um, also some of the comments that I've got here are a little bit outdated. For example, like with Fletcher Baker, I had mentioned uh, Xavier Willison is cheaper. Um, Willison is not even an option. He didn't even play in the 17 for the Broncos. We also had Davey Mowali play on the weekend, um, 268k. He pumped out 30 points, priced at 26 points. I feel like that's really what Mowali is going to be. Um, so obviously he's locked out for this week, so probably not a consideration. Jack Hetherington has been named on the bench for the Newcastle Knights, 267k. I believe he has dual, so you can pick him up in your second row forward and your front row forward, which is somewhat handy. But I kind of look at him as I don't think he's going to have a big change in his role. So that average that he got last year of 29, I feel like that's kind of what you're going to get out of him. And as I said, there are other front row forwards here who are playing, either starting or on the bench, and are cheaper than him. So I probably wouldn't just recommend Jack Hetherington. Uh, Xavier Willison, we can exclude him. He wasn't in the 17 for the Broncos. Sam Hughes, 238k, named on the bench for the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs have named a fairly big bench as well. So they've got Kurt Mann as their utility, but then they've got Sam Hughes. Josh Curran has been named on the bench as well, and uh, Curtis Morin. But I do think that you know, the starters of Max King and uh, Farmer Suli, Max King is going to be the big minute player there. But the other guys, like, I don't really see them as huge minute guys. Uh, let's excu exclude uh, Josh Curran. Um, let's talk more, a bit more about um, Farmer Suli, um, Sam Hughes, and Curtis Morin. None of them are probably going to be huge minute guys. Like, Sam Hughes is kind of just coming into first grade. And I know a lot of people are starting with him as their second front row forward. Um, I didn't personally go down that route. I wanted a little bit more money in my second spot, and I went with Lenu in the end. I think Sam Hughes is going to be um, a pretty safe option as your one of your bench front row forwards. I wouldn't probably want to have him as my second starting front row forward, but in terms of a cheapie, look, I think the price at 23, I expect there is going to be some decent minutes in the middle there for the Bulldogs, and um, he looked pretty promising in the trials. He's got an offload on him. I think he's one of the safer um, cheapies in the front row forward category. Thomas McKayley was firming up to be another good one, but he actually hasn't been named in the 17 for the Cowboys. So unfortunately, that rules him out as an option. So what I've currently done in my squad, because I did have a bench of Hughes and McKayley, I've swapped McKayley now to Liam Henry to, of the uh, Penrith Panthers. Liam Henry, he only played like 16 minutes in the World Club Challenge, so he doesn't feel the best. It feels a bit gross, but he feels probably the most safe in terms of he's going to be on that bench uh, for the Penrith Panthers moving forward. So I'm looking at him as 238k. Just I, I want to spend as little as possible in that front row forward spot. So I'm going to go very cheap with uh, Liam Henry there. Now you could also look at him and uh, Farmer Suli maybe as a head-to-head. -head. The reason I've opted to go with Henry instead of Farmer Suli is that if you're interested in someone like Josh Curran, Jamin Salmon, 
Hutchinson, this is more of a concentration to the Bulldogs type of thing. I don't want to stack up too much on too many middles of the Bulldogs. Like if you had Salmon and Curran already, then you're going Farm Suli, like they're all going to be sharing minutes off each other and you're really not going to be gaining much out of all three of them. I kind of prefer to maybe just have one, two maximum. I've probably, I've already got Curran at the moment in my team. Um, I'm not going to discuss him too much in this video because it's more about cheapies, but I'm probably going to get Salmon, I think, at some point. I want that duel, which is quite flexible. And so I have a feeling that I don't want to go with Farmer Sully. If he proves me wrong and he looks like he's going to be the one who's going to look better, I do feel like Sam Hughes is going to be a bit of a better option than Farmer Sully. I'll go, I'll go to Farmer Sully when I'm proven wrong. Until then, I'll just take Liam Henry. He's from a different team. Probably just spreads my risk um, a little bit more. The final one is Viliami Fafita of the uh, Dragons. So he has been named on the bench. There was an article that came out a few days ago which was that he was firming up for a debut and was on standby if Blake Laurie wasn't going to make the team. Blake Laurie has actually been named in the team and still Viliami Fafita has been named on the bench. So I saw that as encouraging, but then only about 20 minutes later, I saw that Luciano Le Lua's suspension um, has been reduced. I just think Le Lua is going to find his way into that Dragons team and I'm probably already taking a risk on bottom dollar cheapies in Rocky Galvin, uh, Jacob Gagai. I don't think I want to have a third one in Viliami Fafita. So at the moment with my current squad structure, he's not there. I think if you don't have like a Galvin, if you've only got like a Jacob Gagai, I think Fafita is fair enough to take as a bottom dollar guy in the hope that he stays on the bench for the Dragons. But I do see some potential job security issues with him um, in the future. So that's probably why I wouldn't be starting with him personally. Um, in terms of the best front row forward cheapies that I've got here, I think it is probably Sam Hughes, Liam Henry, Farmer Sully, and Fafita. A lot of those other options, I think are probably just going to be a little bit too expensive for me. And when I say cheapies, I'm looking a lot at kind of bench um, front row forwards. Royce Hunt probably isn't quite going to be a bench front row forward. You're likely to look at him as a starter front row forward for you. But in terms of the bench guys, I think Sam Hughes, close to a lock, got a pretty super coach friendly game. Hopefully he gets some minutes, a lot of wraps on him as well in the preseason. Farmer Sully has been named to start for the Dogs, but I do think there's a bit of risk in doubling up with Hughes, so I'd probably just rather take Hughes. Hence, I'm going uh, Liam Henry of the Penrith Panthers. And I think if you are really scraping and you really want that extra 30k, you can go Viliama Fafita, who's been named on the bench. I just do think that there are some job security risks with him, with Luciano Le Lua potentially coming into that team and um, taking that bench spot that Fafita currently has. So taking a look at the uh, second row forward, starting off, we've got Kai Piers paul He's been named on the bench for the Newcastle Knights. And so straight away, this kind of rules him out as an option for me. There were some rumors that he has, or that he was firming to make a start for the Knights, but it has been Dylan Lucas who's been named. And I just think there's going to be a bit of minute sharing between Kai Piers paul and Dylan Lucas. So I'm personally not looking at KPP, at least for the start of the year. What I'm hoping for is that when the Knights draw really, really turns good in round five, Piers Paul becomes a starter. Maybe he's gone down a little bit in price and then we pick him up then. But to start with my team, I don't think I'll be doing that. I'd much rather have Morgan Smithies instead. So Smithies has been named to start, 345k. Um, there's been some talk as well that in the preseason that when Corey Horsburgh comes back from his suspension, that um, he's going to be playing prop and uh, Morgan Smithies may stay at the lock position. Now Smithies is probably a boring pick in that he's just a bit of a work rate tackle bot machine. Um, he'll just make lots of tackles, lots of runs and not really offer much else. But at his price tag at 345k, that might be all you need. Like he's priced at 33.8. I've got some detailed stats on Smithies, which I'll quickly put up on screen here. So I pulled this from 2023 and 2022 from the Super League. Unfortunately, no minutes, so I couldn't calculate anything about PPM. But effectively, if you look at last season, his total Supercoach points was 1,305. Based on the number of games he played, that's an average of 48.3. So potentially 15 points in value there. 2022, and we're looking at an average of 45.5. So potentially 11.7 points of value. So I do feel like if he is the guy who can, he's starting in already in round one, if he manages to stay in that team moving forward, I think he's going to be offering good value at least to start the season. So I'm definitely much more keen on Smithies compared to Kai Pierce Paul for the uh, exact same price. So I'm currently starting with Smithies in my round one team. Um, and another thing as well is that Elliot Whitehead has actually been ruled out for the first kind of three to four weeks with the calf injury. Part of me also wonders, you know, Hosking's been named in that spot. Does Horsburgh maybe go back on an edge? Potentially. Like he has played in that position before. So maybe there's some avenues for Smithies to stay in the starting team. I know Ricky Roulette is a big deal um, and it always happens. But um, at 345k, we've got 
potentially options around that price that we can move down or move up to that is maybe worth a shot. So I'm going to be starting with him. I think he's probably one of the better cheapies in the second row forward. Um, Alex Safarth, 326k. I'm probably not going to be going with him for round one. I just think we've got a lot of other good options in second row forward who we've got certainty of this week. Um, and at 326k, there is definitely some value there. He was the starting lock in the trials for the Tigers, but um, I think it's probably safer to wait until round four to get a good idea of the minutes because um, we hadn't seen Johnny Bateman in the trials for the West Tigers. He was playing lock towards the back end of last season. There is still Fanua Pole. So there's a couple of question marks that I've got there with Safarth. So probably not going to be starting with him for the time being. We'll skip over Talis Duncan because the Rabbitohs have already played. In any case, he wasn't named in the 17 anyway. Um, Finifu Yaki of the Cowboys. Um, I've put a comment, unlikely starter, but that was when I thought Thomas McKayley was going to take his spot. Um, he's been named on the bench for the uh, Cowboys. So he's probably going to be playing some minutes. I just don't feel like there's going to be a lot of extra minutes from what he got last year to make him offer so much better value. Like he averaged 28 minutes last season. I can kind of see that being split with Highland Luki. Like Nana is typically the 80 minute back rower. And, you know, Finifu Yaki plays uh, 28 minutes. That means that Luki, uh, quick math, is playing, what is that, 52 minutes? I can kind of see Luki playing 52 to 55 minutes and um, Finifu Yaki playing the other 28 to 25. And so I kind of see at 292k as well, he's not really bottom dollar. So it's probably not for me. Um, just given that he's coming off the bench, I don't see much change in his role. He looks good on the eye when he plays, but just those couple of other things with his price being a little bit on the higher end, not going to be for me. Um, ben Trevojevic, um, I hope that everyone had him from their team from last week because it looked like he was going to be um, a, hopefully a good long-term option. He killed it, 72 points, scored a try. Um, so a little bit late to talk about him, but hopefully you all had a Burbo as a cheapie, either in your second or forward or in your center wing spot. Um, Samuel Afainu of the Tigers, again, I'm not overly keen because it's probably likely just going to be a bench roll. Don't see much cash generation. Um, I don't really see too many extra minutes on offer. That's going to make him be good value. Um, and we've got Joe Chan now from the Melbourne Storm, who's uh, usurped Kane Bradley as the surprise packet for the uh, back row spot from the Melbourne Storm. So 238k, he was an average of 23 last season with uh, minutes of 21. So given that he's been named to start and there's no Cam Bradley or Sean Bloor in that 17, at 238k, I kind of look at him as it's a low, um, I mean, there's probably some risk to it, but when we're trying to search for cheapies in round one, he's probably looking like at least one of the better ones at a good price at 238k. Um, named to start as well. Hopefully he just gets kind of like three to five games. Hope, like I, f I do find that Bellamy is more on the loyal side with his with his team. Once he's picked it, he's generally probably thought it through pretty hard. So part of me is hoping that uh, Joe Chan just gets a spot. Like Trent Liero last season was that back row spot. Didn't really pull up too many trees, but um, he still was there for pretty much the entire season. So hopefully Joe Chan is similar, but we're getting him at 238k compared to Trent Liero last season who was like 360k. So Joe Chan has gone straight into my team and he's probably firming as one of the better cheapies. Jed Cartwright of the Newcastle Knights has not even been named in the 17, so he's not really an option either. So in terms of your second row forward cheapies, my my picks are going to be um, Morgan Smithies, uh, Ben Trevojevic, and then Joe Chan. Um, I will talk about Jamin Salmon in the center wing part, so don't stress. We'll definitely talk about Salmon because he does meet the criteria of a cheapie. But for more of the second or forward options, Smithies, Joe Chan, and Burbo seem like the highlights for me. Now, moving on to the halfback and the 5'8 position, probably the biggest no-brainer cheapie that we've got this entire round one period is uh, Ethan Strange, 238k, dual 5'8 and center wing. Um, he has been confirmed to be the 5'8 starter over KO weeks for round one. Now, that could obviously change. You know, if he has a couple of poor games, then, you know, maybe KO weeks comes into that squad. But Strange did look good in the trials, much better than KO weeks, in my opinion. So Strange, I think, get him into your team. I don't really have a view on whether you put him in your 5'8 or your center wing. Kind of depends on your other cheapies that you've got. I've currently got him at the moment in my center wing because I've got Galvin, Lucky Galvin, in my um, backup 5'8 spot. But um, I think Ethan Strange, either way, probably get him into your team. Um, because at the very least, sure, you may wait and see to see if K Weeks comes back into that team. But I think you just need to save yourself the trade, in my opinion. Get him into your round one team. And look, if he somehow falls out of the team, then at that point, we're all in it together. And you just trade him out and deal with it at that point. It's, that's probably a better situation than not having him at the beginning of the year. He goes big. 
and is set to make a lot of cash and then you have to use that trade to get him in. So I would just advise to start with him and obviously for that reason, KO Weeks, not starting, not an option as well. I did have Aiden Caesar and Carl Flanagan on this list originally. Um, I just don't think you can go with either of these two in my opinion because one, you've got Ethan Strange as a backup 5'8", you can get for much cheaper and neither of these two are goal kicking. We got that confirmation in the trials. Those are really the only two things that were gonna make me have some kind of appeal to them. We haven't got that, so I'm just not really too interested in either of those two now at this point. Bit of a surprise cheapie that we've got kind of today from the Dolphins is Max Plath. Um, he's been named on the bench. There was some chat of him potentially starting at lock, but Ray Stone has got that starting lock spot. So at 278k, I'm happy to wait and watch because the Dolphins do have a buy fairly early on. So you've got an extra week in the beginning of the season before you need to jump on him in case he actually looks set to make a lot of cash. Um, and especially because he's coming off the bench, a bit more uncertainty on minutes. And we suspect that from the bench, he'll play less than maybe if he was starting in the number 13 spot. In terms of his, his actual work rate, last season when he played an average of 47 minutes, granted it was only two games, he had a base average of 36. So he would be offering some value, but not a whole heap um, at 278k. So I'm happy to avoid Plath for the time being. He's also only available in the 5-8 spot. Um, hopefully, if his role is playing in the middle, he may get 5-8 second or forward dual status, similar to what Josh used to had, I think, last season or the season before. But to start off with, I'm not really going to go with Plath, just because at 278k, we've got a bit more certainty on Ethan Strange. Similar price, we've got the likes of Torpiki from the Warriors, who I'm more, much more keen on. Burbo was the same price. We've got some other cheaper options in front of Ford. I'm kind of looking at it as 278k is not like it's cheap, but he's not as cheap as some other guys, and he's still coming off the bench as well. So he's personally not for me. Uh, Chanel Harris DeVito hasn't been named for the Warriors, so we'll skip over him. Hasn't been an option. Lockie Galvin, so 204k, bottom dollar. Now, the only reason I've currently got him in my starting team is the hope that he gets a bench spot for the Tigers because he looked really good in the preseason. He passed the eye test. I think if you have not got the appetite to start with him, you could wait because he has got that buy in round one. You could potentially jump on him in round four once you've got more information and if he is actually in the team. But, you know, Gus Gould has been talking him up as well in the preseason. I'm kind of just hoping that based on his performances in the trials, he looked that good that he kind of just needs to be in that Tigers 17. And so I'm hoping to start with Galvin. He frees up much more money than say, not much more, but he frees 30K more than Strange does in my 5-8 spot. I can put Strange in my center wing and potentially could just be a little handy option coming off the bench and he's bottom dollar, like he's 204K, you can't go any cheaper than that. So he's definitely not a slam dunk cheapie. Um, Ethan Strange is definitely much more of that mold. But I do like Galvin just for, if you are willing to take that punt, if you like the eye test, he could actually be maybe a good GP option who, similar to what we had probably would say Sam Walker, I think it was maybe two seasons ago or when it, whenever the Sam Walker debuted, he wasn't starting in round one, but people just started with him because it was just chat that this guy's so good. He's eventually going to make that Roosters team. And it happened much earlier in the season that people expected. And um, he ended up being one of the best cash cows. Kind of thinking Galvin could be maybe a similar thing. Obviously, I'm not saying he's as good as Sam Walker, but a case of he could potentially just be in that team eventually. Just start off with him and save that trade and also save that money. So I'm okay to start with him as my backup 5'8". I've got Ethan Strange in my center wing. I've highlighted Max Plath here as an option, but talking out a little bit more, I'm probably cooling on him as an option at least to start off with in round one. Now, the last main positions to cover is the center wing and the fullback spot. I'll very, very quickly talk about the fullback spot. If you've watched my fullback video already, or if you haven't, go watch it please. But um, I basically talk about how it's the highest upside scoring position. You can't really afford to have cheapies there. So Keanu Kinney has been named as the starting fullback for the uh, Gold Coast Titans, but um, he'll be there until Jaden Campbell comes back. Um, but it, the problem is, is that he's probably actually a good option in that he's playing at fullback and he's sub 300k. But because he's only available at fullback, we just can't fit him in when you've got Ponga, Turbo, Reese Walsh, Latrell, Teddy, Gutherson, all of these guns, and four of those guys already played in the weekend, and they all scored over 70, and Latrell cracked a ton. So I think Keeney is just probably not really going to be an option, which is unfortunate, because if he was available in center wing, there's probably a good chance I'd be starting with him, but just can't do it, I think, at this point. So we've already talked about Burbo and Ethan Strange, so I will skip over those two. Um, Bronson Cherry, confirmation that he has not been named in the 17 for the Bulldogs. Jacob Karaz and Stephen Crichton have been named as the centers for the Dogs, 
and Connor Tracy is going to be coming back there as well. So even though Cherry looked fairly good in the uh, preseason trials, um, he's not been named to start uh, for the Bulldogs, so he's now no longer an option. Jack Bostock, 314k. Um, he's been named as the starter for the Dolphins. Um, it's confirmed that Jake Avarillo has not been named as one of the starting centers. Um, it is Tessie New. Now, I don't think Bostock is a slam dunk because he's over 314k. He's priced at 30. I can see him being a very, very slow burn, getting a lot of these kind of 30, 35s. Um, I guess what you're playing on is that the Dolphins have got a very good draw, so potential for attacking stats could be there. But he is playing outside of Tessie New, who is a notorious um, ball hogger. So he's probably not going to get a lot of quality ball out of Tessie New. So I've got Bostock currently in my team. But I could very easily switch him, I think, to maybe someone like a Jamin Salmon. Just because Salmon, at least he's playing in the forwards. He's probably more likely going to be getting me 35 to 40 points, just more on work rate. Whereas Bosok, he didn't really show the best base stats in the preseason trials, and you are much more reliant on the attacking stats. So he could be a bit more of a roller coaster. So I'm kind of toing and froing on Bosok, and I kind of also look at it as Avrilo could just come back into that team. Tessie Nuge could play on the wing, and he could be out of the team altogether. So I don't think he's got like the best job security. It's obviously a positive that he's been able to start for round one. So I think he's probably one of the better cheapies, but if you've got any doubts on him, I think there's fair enough reasons to not start with him in round one. Um, Xavier Savage has been named as one of the wingers for the uh, Canberra Raiders. I'll actually quickly talk about Nick Kotrick as well at the same time. So Savage, I do think, is going to be much more likely to be a certain starter for the Raiders compared to Kotrick. Um, his stats, though, when he's ever played on the wing, hasn't been that good. He only averaged 14 when he played on the wing in 2022. Fullback is definitely the spot I'd rather him playing. And at 350k, he's not necessarily the cheapest, so I'm not personally too keen on Xavier Savage. Nick Kotrick has been named to start 274k. I just think there are some job security risks with him um, because um, Albert Hopawati has been named in one of the center spots. But I think when Seb Chris comes back, I can very easily see Chris coming back into center and Hopawati moving to the wing and Nick Kotrick moving out of that team altogether. So I'm happy to wait on Kotrick. If he plays three games and looks okay, then I'll take him, potentially. But even then, like he was priced at 26.8, but his numbers have really been declining over the last three to four years from a super coach point of view. So I don't think he was going to be the best money maker anyway. So I'm, I'm not too keen on Kotrick. Even though he's been able to start, I don't think he's the best center wing cheapie out there. Now on Drew Hutchinson and Jamin Salmon, um, I'm getting a bit more keen on Hutchinson again, just because that he has been named to start for the Bulldogs in round one at the halfback spot. He's a little bit more expensive at 355k, but he's shown at games at halfback he can base pretty well. Like his two games where he scored 130 and 48 um, in 2023 at halfback, he based like 50 and 40. So he's got a decent work rate. He's got a handy duel as well of center wing, and I think it's halfback. Um, I mean, I would definitely be picking him in your center wing, not in your halfback spot. So Hutchinson is someone I'm considering as a cheapie in my center wing. He's kind of just a bit above that 350k range. I think if you're in doubt between him and Salmon, I have got a slight preference for Hutchinson. Just because Salmon and the Bulldogs, there is a fairly stacked forward bench there. You know, Curran is on the bench, Curtis Moran is there, uh, Farmasuli is play- starting. We've also got Kurt Mann potentially could play some of that ball playing utility uh, role that Salmon could. So, like, Salmon, I haven't got him in my team currently. I could very easily move to him. But um, I'm kind of also thinking, I've got Josh Curran. Part of me thinks that Curran is still going to be okay because a lot of those forwards for the Bulldogs don't look like big minute guys, whereas Curran can play big minutes, and he's got a fairly super coach friendly game. Um, And I'm thinking, I I don't know if I want to start with both Salmon and Curran. So I'm much rather wanting to go with Hutchinson and Curran as a combo compared to Salmon and Curran because those two are pretty much playing in the same position for the dogs. I think if you're not keen on Curran and you just want to take the money saving, I don't think there's anything wrong with Jamin Salmon. He is probably going to make you some money. He's priced at 31.1. I suspect he'll get you about 35 to 40 as an average. And if he's able to jag you any attacking stats, then obviously he'll be looking to make fairly decent money. But I think in general, I would prefer Hutchinson if you're choosing one of these guys in your center wing. Now, obviously, with Jamin Salmon, you can also pick him at second row forward. So I have nothing against picking him in second row forward as well. Uh, Kane Bradley was looking like an option until 4 p.m. today. Uh, He's not in the 17, so he's out of consideration. Um, Tom Eisenhuth of the Dragons, 356k, second row forward, center wing, dual, I believe he has as well. Um, The only reason I'm not siding with him is that despite him being named to be a starter, Luciano Leilua could come back into that team. And I just think the job security risks are there. And he's not necessarily cheap. 
356k, um, I'm happy to skip him uh, for the time being. Now I've got Tommy Talao in this list here. I've written in 17, I think that's a typo. Um, the only reason I've got him in the list here is also because uh, Jason Saab has been confirmed to be out for about six weeks with that hamstring injury. So we won't see it this week, but maybe next week if Tommy Talao is named as the wing replacement. Um, they've also got, I think it's, is it, is it Vega? Uh, Raymond something Vega, I think is what it is. Um, I think, sorry if I completely butchered that or got that name wrong. But he's also in the mix there for Manly. So no certainty on Tommy Talao being available as a cheapie for us um, for round two. So I'm not going to be starting with Talao just for the time being. I want to get that confirmation first. Um, Tua Piki of the New Zealand Warriors, I'm very keen on. So he's been named to start for the Warriors 277k. He's going to be playing fullback until CNK returns, which is at the moment slated for about round four. The reason I'm a bit more interested in Tua Piki is that I think he's a genuine play in your 17 because he's playing at fullback. That's one of the best spots to be for Supercoach. But also because CNK's injury is a hamstring, um, I feel like there's always that potential with hamstrings that you know there's either re-injury recurrence or potential delays to, or setbacks to getting back on the field. And also NL Physio, big shout out to him as well, mentioned that CNK has been also battling with some lower back issues. That can also sometimes be a contributing factor to these hamstring injuries. So I'm kind of looking at it as, could I maybe save myself a trade by starting with him in round one? And if he plays if he plays four games, he'll get at least one price rise. And that price rise could be enough, where it's maybe 60K, where look, you haven't burnt any trades having him in round one. You just make 60K out of having him in round one. And if he plays any more games than four, then you should hopefully make a bit more money as well. So I'm fairly keen on Tua Picky. He's currently in my team. And I think um, there's even some consideration that he is a player in my 17 as well. Jacob Gagai, obviously he's already played on the weekend. I did end up going with Gagai more from the view of, and, and shout out to a few of you out there who did kind of mention this to me, was that at least with Gagai, you've got certainty that he's playing at least that round zero. And I think he looked pretty good as well. Now, obviously, I wouldn't be... You can't you can't start with him, obviously, this week now that he's already locked. Um, but if you've started with him, I think the signs were encouraging. Like, Richie Kenner didn't have a great game, and I thought Gagai looked fairly good. Scored okay as well with 55. So, fingers crossed, he just gets that spot until Ty Monroe comes back in around round 5 or 6. But obviously, with Gagai, we can't really bring him into the team currently. Uh, the final one was Hayes Dunster of the Parramatta Eels. I had him here because I thought he was a potential Siva replacement for the first couple of games for the Eels, but um, he's not even been named in the uh, 17. So he's not really an option for us uh, anymore. So I guess to summarize my view of the center wing um, cheapies, Ethan Strange, Burbo, um, easy bets. Um, Bostock got some job security risks potentially. Low base, so he could be a slow burn, but I don't mind him because they've got a really good draw, the Dolphins. Um, Hutchinson and Salmon, I like. I think either of the two, maybe both, maybe a little bit too much, but I don't mind either of the two for sure as a play in your center wing every week. I did circle Tommy Talao, but we haven't even seen that yet, so I probably would, in hindsight, reduce that to just Tour Picky and then uh, Jacob Gagai. I'm not too keen on some of those other options that I've got listed there. All right, guys, that is my summary of the best cheapies to target for your round one team selections for NRL Supercoach 2024. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video and got some value out of it. If you did, please give a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing to the channel as well if you haven't already. Let's get to 4,000 by the weekend. That would be absolutely amazing. And I really appreciate all the recent growth on the channel as well. It's very much appreciated. But we'll see you all in the next video.